Patreon.com slash the walkoff podcast. Uh, $4 a month gets you in there. It is a Monday morning mailbag on a Tuesday afternoon kind of day. My favorite show. Okay, uh, let's talk Boba Shett. Um, probably 700 comments in the last week, and I would say at least 500 of them have been more or less Boba Shett is trash. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, he's not. He's definitely not. Um, he he's... might be a second baseman, but he's not <laughs> trash. <laughs> I'll I'll hear the argument for that he would be better off at second base. I don't necessarily agree with it. I think he's still well. For sure, he's a shortstop this year. I don't yes, see him getting moved obviously. mid-season. Um, he's finally of mature age he's fully ripe let's taste the banana and see how good it is at this point that's a weird analogy too frick uh let's start that one over normally your analogies are so dead (laughs) on right like get back to the the Uh, cheddar being velo analogy that's the that's the that's the sweet spot yeah no i agree with you man um i think when it comes to boba shut this year is going to be a big deciding factor for what this organization does with him positionally going forward but uh an interesting thing with boba shut is it's not like there's a pile of really solid short stops available in free agency over the next couple years that's what we're going to get to here so this comment from Derek. Arian on Twitter uh, DM'd us and said, if you were Atkins, what kind of contract extension would you offer Bo for Darian? Uh, with the fact that he's only 25, I'd probably do like 25 over 10 years kind of a deal. So 250. <clears throat> Listen, Darian, I couldn't agree more. I love that. I, if we could get Bo Bichette 10 years, 250, I think, I think the Jays do that tomorrow. I sure, but, but that's like offering Chris Beck for Dalton Varsho. Yeah. Like, let's just do that then. Let's just do yeah. the one that's an awesome deal for us. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to get so much money. So yes. much money. I mean, we talked to Ben Nicholson Smith about it. He threw out 340 over 10. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, okay. A couple factors. And here. Ben, Ben pretty much straight up said, Bo's going to free agency. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, very. He said he'd need point. to be he'd need to be blowing away to know. Now, one thing worth noting: just because he goes to free agency doesn't mean he doesn't stay with the Jays. We just saw of with course. Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge was you know disrespected in capital letters uh, by his offer the last year of of his arb with uh, with the Yankees, right? And by okay. the fans. Don't forget about the fans. <laughs> yeah, booing and throwing <laughs> batteries as uh, only best Yankee fans do. He tested free agency. He got big money offers from other markets and came back to New York. So there is still a path to Bo- Bobachet being a long-term forever Blue Jay, uh, despite and that path the entails right a now. lot of money, a lot, a lot of money. Bless you, Adam. In true professional fashion, by the way, Adam has managed to mute and sneeze, and now he is back, ready to go. Here, this is I- why we're the number one podcast on the charts. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I was able to get my face off camera or not. So I hope no one saw my squinchy sneeze face, but we'll see. Um, okay. Boba Shett, mega deal. Here's what I'm looking at. Uh, there's, I guess, two of the biggest factors that... Even if we say defensively he sucks, even if we don't see him take a step forward this year, right? Even if it's still 25 errors, but he leads the league in hits. Listen, Xander Bogarts is not a defensive whiz, and there is no way at 26 years old, sorry, 27 years old, when Boba Shett enters free agency in 2026, that he is not after a bare minimum of the Xander Bogarts deal. And I think he's going to want a three in front of that. So Xander Bogarts got 10 years, 287. There's no way he's not after 10 for three, a minimum. Well, okay. So we are going to watch three season, three off seasons of inflation, right? This off season, we're going to watch Shohei Otani make mad money. Jim Cramer, mad money for Shohei Otani. Now, does he pitch and play? Uh, a mean bat yeah he does but he's going to 
raise the entire water level for all contracts and everything else is going to be affected by that. Um, the following season, Juan Soto going to do something very similar as well. I wouldn't be surprised if Juan Soto gets a contract that starts with a four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Three years of inflation, right? So just as the Xander Bogarts as the comparable, as a baseline, plus add a couple off seasons of inflation. Uh, I guess that would be the third off season. So maybe it's only two years of what, anyways, we're going to yeah. get critiqued on our math skills as we always do. Um, numbers are going up. Here's the other thing. <clears throat> it is a very dry free agent class over the next three years leading into Bo Bichette's free agency. Uh, it's here, been an embarrassment of riches at shortstop the last couple of years, and that is not the case going forward. This is, look, you can question Scott and I on our math, but here is the cold, hard truth of the matter. Supply demand is a real factor. Brandon okay. Nemo loves supply and demand, lives for it. Lives for it. <laughs> uh, you see guys every year where it's like they – the stars aligned. They had a good off seat or they had a good season and they were like the only option available. So anybody looking to add a, you know, whatever criteria you're looking for, that's your only option. And there's always three or four teams looking for that guy. <clears throat> Here's the list of free agent middle infielders. I've included second baseman. Okay. So even if we're saying, well, the Mets might take a run at Bo Bichette and They've already got Francisco Lindor. So maybe the plan is we'll just move him to second base, right? Here's the list of free agent shortstops uh, heading into the Boba uh free agent year, 2026. So we got Brandon Crawford, 38 years old. Gio Urshela, 33. Paul DeJong, 33. Tim Anderson, not a defensive whiz himself, 32 years old. Willie Adamas. Not a defensive whiz, 30 years old. Boba Shett will be 27. Trevor Story. If 34, the, uh, right? Yeah, 34. Um, if he opts out of that contract with the Red Sox. Uh, if we expand, I mean, these are not. If we expand to second that. baseman, we're only adding Jose Altuve, who probably isn't leaving the Astros, uh, and Glaber Torres, who will be 29 years old. Ask any Yankees fan how they feel about Glaber Torres. He's probably the most sought after name in that bunch. I think it's, I think even people who are down on Boba Shett would agree with that. Maybe I'm full of shit. Yeah. I mean, there's some pretty, there's, there's been a lot of Bo hate in the last little bit. And it, it's kind of surprising to me. I get he sucks defensively. I'm aware, you know, like it is frustrating to watch him, but you need to understand that this is not a Bo specific problem. Like I mean, Adam just brought up Tim Anderson. Look into Tim Anderson's numbers. I would love Tim Anderson, but defensively, he's Bo. <laughs> this is the thing, and <clears throat> this is where I, I'm. And I just want to bring this up to like remind Blue Jays fans that there is a little bit of like blinders on bias when we watch Bo Bichette and he's struggling, and then at the end of the year, and you check, and it's like. Oh, Bo Bichette led the league in errors again. And it's like, yeah, but he also led all of shortstops and games played. Like, mm -hmm. did he, he have, also led the did league have, in hits twice in a row? Did he have five more errors than Tim Anderson? Sure. Did he have 40 extra games played too? Like, yeah, that's also true. Like, shortstop is just a high error position as well. So when people are rough on Bo Bichette and say that he is not a MLB caliber shortstop, I just want everyone to recognize the fact that like there aren't a bunch of good shortstops out there. Like it's a pretty thin list. Mm -hmm. like, <sighs> yeah, I, again, Bo's 24. Like I, I know I listen, we're not going to convince anybody who has already written Bo off and hates him. I'm aware of that. And I know that every time we defend him, people get all worked up. How can you guys be so fucking stupid? I don't know. I, I don't know how I could be so stupid. I just, I just think Bo's 
for what else is out there is not so bad. And when it comes to offense is a stud. So you put up with the errors for now at 24, you cross your fingers, you hope he improves defensively and you'll roll it out another year. Cause what are the other freaking options? Well, here, I, I got fangraphs.com. This is depth charts by position and they've got all 30 teams ranked. I'm not going to go down the, the full list, but mm-hmm. number one is the Rays with Wander Franco. Then you got the twins with Correa. Padres have Bogarts. Rangers have Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon. The Mets have Francisco Lindor. The Phillies have Trey Turner. Then it's the Blue Jays with Bo Bichette. Number seven out of 30 teams. A lot of that, yeah, is on the back of his offensive skills. He is a POS. I can't argue. He is a pure offensive stud. Uh, But I'm going down the list here. There's a lot of teams who are going to be in the market for what Bo Bichette is selling come 2026. Uh, the New York Yankees, hate to say, are going to be kicking the tires on a Bo Bichette. Now, do they have two oh, God. top-tier uh, shortstop prospects in Anthony Volpe and Oswald Peraza? Yeah, they do, but also... Prospects by, always turn out. <laughs> well, and by 2026, those guys are going to be where Second Boba basement. Shed is no. right now. Like, you know, like there's going to be three years of growing pains and, and like, oh, like, are these guys ever going to figure it out defensively? Well, Boba Shed's there, you know, let's just go kick, you know, throw money at him. The Cardinals, 14th. They'd take a, a run at Boba Shed, I'm sure. Uh, the Rockies, who knows? Maybe the Rockies are contending by then and they're like, hey, let's go get Dante's son. Remember Dante Bichette? Yeah, of course we do. Let's go get him. Hmm. Uh, the Mariners, 17th, with J.P. Crawford. You're telling me you'd rather have J.P. Crawford than Bo Bichette? Of course not. Dodgers, number 20. Dodgers had a bad offseason, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maybe the think, first one. In you think the decade. Dodgers aren't going to throw $300 million at Bo Bichette? I don't know. The Giants, Brandon Crawford's going to be retired by then. If they're still contending, why not? The Nationals, maybe they do get sold in the next year or two. Maybe the new owner, maybe it's uh, Elon Musk or some other billionaire. And And they're like, these are all organizations you're naming that have gone big on money before, right? So like three years looking into that crystal ball, it's really tough to decide what the landscape is going to be like in baseball. But let me tell you right now, Bo Bichette is going to be coveted whether you like him or not. And the options outside of Bo from within might not be any better. In fact, I bet they're not. Anyways, we'll move on from Bo Bichette here because we do, we have talked Bo a lot over the last couple of weeks and we do appreciate all of the interaction about it. And honestly, if you're negative on Bo, that's your, that's your opinion, man. Like, that's fine. <laughs> do your thing. Yeah. Like Adam said, right? You can enjoy baseball however you'd like to. And if that's being incredibly negative on all of the superstars on your team, hey, you go to it, bud. We have a sarcastic expression around my house. Whenever we catch ourselves being critical of the way someone else in the family is enjoying a particular thing, and we always catch ourselves and we say, you're having fun wrong. Mm -hmm. And then you realize (laughs) and you go, oh, that's not a real thing. That's not a thing. Yeah, that's not a thing. Right. So have fun the way you want to have fun. Yeah, yeah, totally. But all right, let's uh, let's move on from there then.